try and find out what you're passionate about and go for it. And don't be a pussy about it, just fucking do it. <laughs> You gotta put in work, you don't get good at something just thinking about it or sitting around. You gotta, you gotta bust your ass, get what you want. Just uh, figure out what you wanna do. Not that you have to stick with one thing. Put in some effort and time into it, and then it'll, you'll get more out of it. This guy have a name? Uh, I, I took a photo from uh, Chernobyl and I was mixing it in with the bees, like, kind of like showing that our food and the bees and the toxicity and stuff is all kind of out of control. And we got the airplane with the, they call them chem, chemtrails. Don't really need to get into a, any conspiracies, but it's like crop dusting humans instead of plants. Uh, well, my pops is an architect, and I uh, always wanted to hang out with him, so I'd, he set up a second drafting table for some of his drafting buddies that would come and work with him on stuff and it was usually open so I would do a lot of drawing growing up and uh, kind of got into comic books and drawing my own comics so that's kind of how I started getting into art and you know he, he had markers and um, watercolors and colored pencils and all that stuff so it's like, you know, gold mine for me there. And then some of my buddies would come over and we had like a comic book club where we'd just draw draw comics and then we'd make up our own characters and it's pretty cool. But um just wanted to get more realistic with my drawings so I would when I started to get out of comics and started collecting like baseball and football and basketball cards so then I would start to draw um, my favorite basketball players and stuff like that and so I was drawn from photos really early and just kind of taught myself a lot of stuff and and also I had a little bit of training I had a couple private lessons but mostly taught myself in the beginning that's pretty sweet
I was growing up, I used to, you know, get messed up on drugs and alcohol, and just like a lot of the kids do, and be rebellious, and did a lot of kind of bad things, got into a lot of fights, and went to jail for uh, beating some guy up and taking his wallet. So I went to jail for like a nine months for that. But that was back before I went to college. So that kind of is gone. I, I haven't really been violent in a long time and that's kind of my past. And uh, went to jail again, but that was for graffiti. And I don't consider that really a crime. It's just fun to watch the graffiti. I'm like really big in the graffiti, so I watch the trains go by and they're covered in like stuff from all over the United States and parts of Canada. So you're getting artists' work coming from all parts of the United States, and, and it's really cool. And I'll see those same guys on the internet making videos. And then their stuff comes and it drives by like right outside. So I'll be like, wow, that guy like travels the world and does graffiti and his thing just rolled right by my studio. So I, every time it comes by, I jump out and check them out. It's, it's awesome. San Francisco Art Academy. Went there for like six years. And that was probably some of the funnest times I've ever had. And just being in that city alone was awesome. And then having some of the best art teachers in the world and this is great. Like learned like so much, like doubled, tripled my skills in the first year. And just kept going. Tyra. Well, she, uh, I don't know, her mother they both came over from, I think, Thailand, and uh, that's kind of a weird situation. Moms would, like, have these guys come over that she met through, I don't know, some practice she had, some sort of yoga or massage or something, and bring guys home for her kid. I don't know. So she's pretty, you know, went through a lot of tough stuff and I didn't really know any of that. I just took a lot of photos of her and uh, painted some and I didn't really hear the dark stories till afterwards, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if I like captured it in the painting or not, but she's doing really well now. Crazy. Fish head poke or fish poke. Mm. So that's what his hat represents. It's a fish head. Nimrod. You know, Jesus of the uh, fish. I 
was in San Fran going to art school there, and um, there was a cafe, a really nice cafe, right next to the illustration building that I was always at. And uh, I was down there getting a coffee, and I had some of my work with me in my hand because I just got out of class. And this older lady's like, "Is that yours?" "Yeah." I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "You want to have a show?" I'm like, uh, "Yeah." And this was when I was only like. You know, two years in, I was really excited to do this show with her, and she brings me up to her gallery, and she automatically put me in the show that was in there, or coming in like that week. It was some erotic show, so I put this male nude in there, and <laughs> and she loved it, and then she gave me a one-man show, and that was really cool, because all my friends came out, and they're all artists as well, and and uh, so she's like, well, I th you got a lot of talented friends, you know, I want you to do a group show here. So I did a group show with like about 10, 14 of my buddies and all of them are like really good artists. A couple of them are traveling all over the world. They got videos on the internet, like real professionals and stuff. And that's how it kind of started putting together shows. And, and then I uh, moved back home from there and me and some friends started up the Arts Collective, which is about 20 people that come together and we'd put together music shows in the park and uh, a couple different art shows in the town hall with uh, Lisa Zalanka and um, some of the other people. And, and uh, McNerney helped out with one of the shows. And so that was like, I don't know, eight, seven, eight years ago. And... We just kept doing shows and haunted houses, and after that, kind of stopped because uh, we ran out of money, and one of the buildings we were renting and collapsed, and all of our stuff got messed up, and so we had to kind of terminate that. But then I met a couple other friends, tattoo artists, and uh, just people from MCC and. We decided to do our own art shows, and we got a call from one of my friends, uh, and they're like, "Yeah, Hartford Art Space—it's one of the best galleries in the state." And someone backed out, and they need somebody to fill the gallery, and you only got two weeks. And we're like, oh, "I don't know. Let's—I don't know if we're gonna do it or not." And then we're like, "You know, fuck it, let's go." And so we did it, and the people after that backed out so that two weeks turned into six weeks so we had six weeks to do the show and it was awesome and immediately on the spot they asked us to come back for the next year and that was back in in april the second one and um in between that we did a show at the factory over at american sleep bearing had about 40 something uh, graffiti artists all painting it same time and like three live bands and that was the best art show I've been a part of and now we're here and we're gonna have the uh, art factory part two coming up probably this September so doing a lot of cool stuff still I think Olaf has a lot of uh, creativity and I think he's uh, just awesome. The guy is a good guy too, a really good guy. Graffiti has definitely uh, helped me stay sane more than any other form of the arts. You know, you go out, it's usually at night and and you're painting in the dark and you're kind of middle of nowhere and it's not necessarily any of the illegal parts of it because I don't really do that anymore but just nobody's around and you can spray paint anything you want and it's like like real freedom kind of as an artist if it's you know somewhere and no one's gonna get upset what you paint and or if you're painting and, you know, you just go to town. Um, well, it's, it's always edgy. It's insanely good. It's getting better all the time. And nobody else does 
doesn't like him. Uh, well, I think he's learned how to pretty much stay out of trouble. But I think also that uh, he's, he's in his hometown and people have learned to accept him more. Uh, and when he feels accepted, he's uh, easier to be around. pretty good. Uh, it's mellow, which is nice. Kind of used to these big zoo type uh, art shows as of lately. It's kind of nice to relax and talk to people. All the other shows I've been doing lately, it's just like, <laughs> don't really, you know, not that I'm talking about the art a lot, it's just nice to get the responses from everybody. I don't know, I, I don't envision myself moving out of Stafford. I don't really care to. I'd like to be able to go in and out of the city once in a while. But I can envision myself having a nice studio in a small town where it's not too many people bother you. really chilled out place where it's not a too many people you know you can go for a walk during the day somewhere and you don't gotta worry about like a whole bunch of people being around you know you can go for a walk in the woods and you're not gonna see anybody it's kinda nice to be able to do that and escape sometimes or not necessarily escape but just go for a walk let it out, whatever. Because I get it when I'm doing the graffiti. I get that part. You know, you're going for a walk to get to the space and you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and nobody's really going to see what you did except other people like you. And that's really cool. People that enjoy the art and it's, I don't know, pretty fun.